A Kiwi father and son team solving tough technical problems. No, make that impossible technical problems and building a successful business from the ground up. That's what this book is about. And that's what I'm going to tell you about in this video. Gavin Goo here from ultimatereloader.com. Here on the channel, you've seen the Amp Mark II annealer and the Amp Press, both from annealing made perfect. Now, a number of months back, Alex, the father of the father-son team, the son is Matt, sent me his book, Making Perfect, which is basically the story of annealing made perfect. And I thought, okay, this will be kind of interesting. Well, I got into the book and I got really into it. Alex tells the story of kind of his professional history. And what I wanted to do was provide you guys an overview of what's in the book. So the book is 326 pages. It's a soft cover. You can go to the AMP store and get this directly from Annealing Made Perfect. It covers the history of AMP, uh, the develop of the AMP annealer, and a bunch of interesting kind of steps and people that were really important along the way to make this product successful. And then also the AMP press, why that was important, how it was developed, how it was brought to market as well. So if you're interested in annealing technology, this book pretty much tells the story of the only viable commercial product that is a consumer inductive annealer for brass cases, but it goes well beyond that as well. Alex and Matt are a father-son team. That is always a tricky thing to pull off and they've managed to do that very successfully. A lot of familiar faces in the book, including my own. I was honored to be included in the book. Uh, so I wanted to walk through that. Uh, in addition to all that, the in entire Annealing Under the Microscope research series, which is a five-part series, is included in the book. So if you're interested in that research plus want to know the story, this book is a no-brainer. you got to get your copy. So the story sort of starts after we get through Alex's personal you know, and professional history. We get up to the point where Alex and Matt were thinking about annealing and why it's important and they landed on well you know inductive annealing could just be the way to go the vision was it should be easy to use safe you know no open flames quick setup repeatable and a proper hardness result those were kind of the stakes in the ground that Alex and Matt were envisioning at the very start of the process so then we go into research and development the idea really came to full fruition in 2013, and that took them up to 2015 when they could actually demonstrate those results with actual hardware. Amp Annealing Limited incorporated on April 30th, 2012, just ahead of this. Uh, and Alex and Matt had an interesting approach. They actually partnered with the Auckland University of Technology, AUT. So they had students that were, you know, working on their degrees in the lab, working with them on how to do an inductor and how to produce repeatable results. Um, and actually, one of the biggest challenges was how to not blow up the circuit board, literally. They had a, a lot of these blow-ups happen during research and development. It's kind of interesting. When you go into new territory, sometimes you find yourself at cliff's edge and you realize there's a reason no one has done this before. These are some really difficult problems that we're solving. And I think that's what made it so exciting. I'd have to ask, ask Alex if that was a, a dynamic, how exciting those extreme challenges and actually overcoming some of those real frustrations were. So these initial challenges centered around inductor design, fixed air gap, variable air gap, how to get even inductive heating around the entire case mouth and shoulder area of the case. Uh, learning about micro Vickers hardness testing, which is really interesting. They can section the cases and they can pinpoint almost microscopically different parts, parts of the case. So around the primer pocket, around the case rim, at the base of the case, different portions of the neck and the shoulder. They can really pinpoint for a particular case, what the hardness levels are uh, microscopically. And it uses this interesting diamond point that measures basically the width and the height of the impression given a certain amount of force. And then you can deduce the hardness from that. So 
with all of these challenges, they also had to figure out the pilot design. This right here is a pilot. You've seen this in the videos. This holds the case just in the right orientation so that inductive coil is properly positioned and so that a, re a repeatable and proper result can be had. And there were multiple ideas and different iterations, just like everything else uh, on this particular machine. So the first SHOT Show appearance was kind of the big public debut and that happened in 2015. A functional prototype was demonstrated at the show. Uh, it actually looked very similar to this Mark II unit that I have right here in terms of the overall shape of the housing. There was limited functionality, uh, but it was enough to show the industry what this kind of machine would be capable of. And a lot of big names showed interest from very early on. The SHOT Show 2016 was the first time near production sample units were sold. In other words, we showed you the prototype last year. This is what you're going to be able to buy. It might not be 100% ready for prime time, but it helps the customer see exactly what this 1.0 product is going to do, what it's going to look like, how it's going to work. And then the first production units would follow in 2016. So those were the first SHOT Show appearances. Then came the section of the book that I was most interested in and had wondered about since learning about the Mark II annealer and getting my own. And that is when you run an analyze pass on a case, you're able to put a case into the machine, analyze it, it brings it basically to the melting point right on, on the neck, and somehow the machine magically knows what optimal annealing should be in terms of the code. The code corresponds to how long and how much heat uh, the, the induction process lasts for. And this, this chapter in the book described a breakthrough that the team had based on multiple parameters. There's a lot of data in the book and there's a description of kind of this magic moment. I won't give it away. You're going to have to buy and read the book if you want to know how Aztec works. But once I read that chapter, it all made sense to me and it was, it was brilliant. You know, and, it, and actually like a lot of great inventions almost happened by accident. One of those moments in the lab. So the result is a, a software update at the time that you could buy for the AMP annealer that would allow this automatic analyzing to happen. You could produce codes. Initially, Alex sat in the lab and, and had to manually test hardness on cases and have different lots and different case neck thicknesses from, from neck turning and, and, and all these things to give customers these codes. Well, now you can produce codes. Now they were able to crowdsource the table of codes that you can find on their page that lists all of the pilots and all of the different types of brass and all of the different permutations and notes. So you can either go there and get a code, put it in your machine and just go ahead and nail cases or you can analyze your own cases. Very, very interesting stuff. After this, Alex and Matt thought, well, how can we validate our results? You know, we can do the hardness testing with the Micro Vickers hardness testing, either of the neck or with sectioning in the lab, both, both processes were, were used. Uh, but how can we actually validate for loaded ammunition what the net result is? And it was identified this need to plot bullet seating force versus bullet seating distance. There are multiple products on the market that have more or less a pressure gauge or a spring-loaded instrument that can tell you instantaneously what forces are while you're seating, but it's hard to determine from a fluctuating needle what is going on and it's hard to capture that and compare results. And the amp press was the product of that whole need that need to be able to quantify results. It produces a force distance plot. You're gonna to wanna to check out my multiple videos covering that. We've got different experiments that we've been looking at. How does this affect bullet seating force? How does that you know, affect bullet seating force? Very precise instrument. This is a simulation die. It's got a constant linear curve, so it's a straight line in the software, and that's used to validate that the machine is 
acting correctly. And you can see just how precise the machine is when you, when you produce those plots. So it is used while loading ammunition to ensure quality and consistency. Uh, you can use this to understand uh, how different component parameters affect bullet seating, uh, neck tension, and conduct research as well. So the amp press kind of completed the picture between producing great annealing results and then confirming those while loading ammunition. A lot of competitors will use the amp press to confirm every single cartridge they load. Pretty interesting stuff. Okay, and then at the very end, there is the annealing under the microscope research. They've even got all the certified lab test results. I mean, this is very comprehensive. So in that series, part one covers the properties of brass, understanding brass hardness. Part two, variances by brand and lot, factors affecting neck tension. It's kind of interesting. You might assume that if your neck, if your hardness is, is too high, too hard on your case necks, that you'll have excessive neck tension, right? Because you've got to work against that when you seat the bullet. But what really happens, and they discover this, is there's more spring back. If the brass is harder, the, the neck portion of the die will constrict it down, and then when it pops back out, it boop, springs up too large, which, which can result in too low of neck tension. These are the kinds of things that are hard to quantify and correlate until you get a lot of data and you look at all that data and compare everything. Part three, the effect of case weight on annealing and annealing performance, and then Aztec variations. Part four, how annealing affects cases and the benefits of annealing every time. One of the benefits of annealing is case longevity. And then part five is testing and data. Basically putting everything all together. A lot of you have asked, okay, you know, Gavin, that's fine. We've got the amp press and you know, we've got the amp annealer, but does it really matter? Is it gonna really change the way my groups uh, print on paper? The answer is yes. In short distance, they demonstrate how annealing and how all of these considerations affect group size. And then at long distance, vertical shot dispersion is a key consideration. And if you can tighten up your extreme spread and your standard deviation on your velocity, you will definitely tighten up your groups in terms of vertical shot dispersion. And they also have data confirming how this kind of a system can help you achieve that goal. So if you're wondering about different types of annealers, do I really need an inductive annealer? If you're wondering about the properties of brass and brass cases and and how important is the quality of the brass, the lots of brass, different reloading techniques. This book will answer a lot of those questions and it also has a lot of interesting insights into how AMP was started and how it's been grown into a very successful company. And as a business owner myself, I was really interested in the product development strategy uh, some insights that Alex had around the total time you initially think and the total amount of money you initially think it will take to bring a par product like the Mark II to market. And there's a certain multiplier he talks about in the book for each of those that it will take. And having completed a different, completely different kind of project in life recently, I can validate, wow, that really is true. So insights like that, uh, you know, risk and reward, uh, partnering with the university, partnering with some really strategic people in the industry that were able to validate and able to give input on, on these products and the technology in general. Uh, and then finally, again, the fact that Alex and Matt have been able to have a father-son relationship and a professional relationship together and work within a, this successful startup and company together, I think speaks volume to the, both of them as, as people. It's an inspiration. So if you've read the book, I would love to hear what you thought. What was your favorite part of the book? And what were the biggest lessons that you learned or interesting insights that you gleaned from the book? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. If you click on that first link in the video description, it will take you over to the product page where you can buy this book. I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy it too.
That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.